both of these teams are tenacious. A rivalry that's older than LCS itself. This game, it is huge. TSM had a slow start to the split. They have some redemption on their minds after a showing at MSI. Controlled game from Counterlogic Gaming. The start of the split going very well for them. Uh, you guys pretty much stopped that game, so. Honestly, when TSM plays CLG, both of us bring like our 110%. This will really show like who's the better team. Through many roster changes, through many different rosters, it's, it's just stick there, that rivalry. I like all the CLG guys, but with all this hype, I really want to beat them. You want to come out strong and beat CLG like always? Cobalter has so much to prove, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves. I think beating TSM is like the first step in him solidifying himself as like one of the top carry mid laners. Pride is definitely on the line here. We need to beat CLG. Last split on Winterfox when we played TSM, we're all walking back to our rooms right next to TSM. They were like, oh, we're so bad. Saying that right next to the team that you just beat, that made me feel really angry. Kind of want to get some payback. Welcome to week two, day two of the North American League Championship Series Summer Split. Now we're coming to you once again from our studio here in Los Angeles, and the crowd is pumped up for another day of league. There's lots of love out there for the teams and even a little bit of love for our very own Kobe. And of course, we've got a reverse Annie in the crowd today. Nice to see that. Cloud9 arrived at the studio not too long ago. They're going to be facing off today against Zhao Wei Zhao and the rest of Team Impulse, who you see arriving as well. They're looking, both teams rather, are looking for a win to stop their slide in the standings. We'll see what they can do in our first matchup of the day. Now, hello everyone, I'm James Dash Patterson, and we're no doubting for more surprises on the Rift today. Today, joining me on the analyst desk, we've got Aiden Zyrene Moon, Sam Kobe Hartman Kensler, and David Freak Turley. Gentlemen, a big day of games, including that marquee matchup, third game of the day, TSM versus CLG. And that has been the one match on everyone's radar, the latest battle between House CLG and House Team Solo Mid. And this one never disappoints. So, gentlemen, how do you think these perennial powerhouses stack up this time around? And just like Doublelift said in that intro there, every time these teams come up against each other, it's 110%. Right as they're hitting their stride, they're going to meet each other. And TSM, last week and yesterday, they went back to a mid-focused type of composition style. And it worked for them again. It's great. They're going back to that. It's going back to their roots, start of the season. Good to see them pick up those wins. Now they're up against CLG, who they have a new mid laner. Poe Belter's in there, and they don't have to put resources into him. He's winning the lane. He's second highest KDA in the league right now at 24.5, and they don't have to do anything to Poe Belter's lane. He shows up for the team fights, and that frees up Smithy to go do whatever he wants. That frees up their shot callers, Zion Spartan and Aphromoo, to make really calm, collected plays across the map and that's why this is just going to be a great match overall because they match up so well in different places. Yeah, no doubt Poe Belter is going to come out swinging, uh, looking for Bjergsen, but I'm really interested in the top lane uh, just because yesterday Zion had a hard carry game for CLG on his rumble. He is number one in the, all of the LCS as far as KDA. It's only been three games, but still very impressive stat, 25 KDA for him. You know, Zyrus is you know in the middle of the pack as far as top laners are right now. Uh, three KDA for all the top laners, but <laughs> that, that just, matchup, that's so stark. That matchup, COG has shown that they are very willing to have a top lane carry. Um, and although TSM have practiced that style, uh, it has not shown up in the LCS games yet. Yeah. yeah, and certainly, I mean, CLG solo lanes are very, very strong, and I think CLG can be considered the favorites in this match. But I think there's actually another strength here that that <clears throat> it's, it's funny because it's an old strength, but it's their duo lane here. Double lift and Aphromoo uh, are confident to be doing any duo lane in North America. Uh, we know the Wild Turtle and Lustboy aren't really known for the laning phase in general, so this is another pressure point that CLG can go back to old ways, crush the duo lane, and use those guys to win the game as well. And I also really like the new wrinkle in that you know <laughs> old power that they have, where Double Left is willing to take the team-oriented sure. AD carry, even into a Kalista matchup, and take Sibur into that. It adds a lot of uh, versatility to CLG. Right, of course, yeah. CLG can pull a Fnatic and just like, go send Zion Spartan, aka Huni, into the top lane and just like, 
crush Dyrus and that's fine. I just, there's, I think, more angles of attack for CLG here. Well, you know, yesterday we had a lot of discussion about power picks. With CLG on the blue side, TSM on the red side, how do we feel the advantage falls going into Champion Select here? It, it all comes down to what you value, and personally, I'm going to say the blue side has the advantage here. First off, you don't have to ban Rise. You get to power pick that first if it's left open for you. And since they have two carries, and it's the solo laners, Zion Spartan and Poe Belter, you'll at least get a counter pick for one of them. And if you don't get a counter pick, then you're going to be able to get a priority power pick for them that you think is something very strong. And even then, you can be like, well, let's just put Poe Belter on something safe so Bjergsen can counter pick like an AP Kog'Ma or whatever. Yeah, that definitely is true. I always value red side a little bit higher when I'm playing TSM just because I want a safe counter pick for the mid lane to deal with whatever Bjergsen has. I never want to give him uh, the ability to counter pick my mid laner, um, but that's a very valid point. Plus, you know, all the historians in the audience will know that CLG blue side is the most important thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> all we have are blue side strategies, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great, so we're back in season two here. Yeah, I think there is an interesting wrinkle as you're talking about Rise first pick. Um, blue side allows you to, to pressure uh, early game aggressive junglers. And that is something that can actually be a really big factor where jungle pressure is like one of the big strengths of TSM in that they can use Santorin to get Bjergsen ahead. So I think that's also like, you know, two bands and a first pick on jungle calls would be a very important pinch for CLG. Mm. And so you think that, because based on yesterday, there, we didn't see jungle picks pinched too often. Do you think that's some, a direction that the CLG might go today? I mean, we saw enemy try and fail. Mm -hmm. Right, like enemy was like, all right, we're gonna like first pick Gragas, and then oh, right, like Gragas is still there. It's only so, good if you're actually pinching the pool. Right, though. right. So I mean, failing at champion select aside, I think it really just depends on the teams, right? We've yeah. seen teams screw it up. We want to see sort of what the strategy is. Um, my first thought is maybe you try pinching um, the jungle if Rise is already banned. If it's not, then it becomes kind of a weird toss-up. Hmm. All right. Well, we have a few games prior to that matchup, but it's sure to be an exciting one. Over on Twitter, you guys were calling out a number of flashy plays from yesterday's matches. Our first comes from Team Dignitas against TDK. FFG Lord writes, that was a beautiful flash over the chain of corruption. Let's take a look. That forces TDK off of the base. 15 seconds on a zingy. Still have some time to wait for him. Oh, he flashes over the chain of corruption, but Seraph goes in with the same idea. You can see here. This chain. Just, nope. nope. Woo. Thank you very much. Here's the shield. Yeah, Seraph jumps in after that, and everybody's like, we gotta save him. But no. Yeah, as someone who tries to make flashy plays all the time, uh, if we assume Gabsu did that on purpose, like sometimes it's just like, I wanna flash rune prison you. I'm gonna say he 100% did that on purpose. The corrupted, right. uh, the ultimate was already in the air before yeah. he flashed. Yeah, so, so I think right there, like what Gamsu's doing is like, as soon as I see Varus animate, I'm gonna assume it's the ult and just flash it no matter what. Like, the guy could have pierced the guard and be able to flash that as well, just like because he's ready to flash Rude Prison the guy. But either way, it's a great play. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, that basically turned what looked like a big run back for TDK into a win for Team Dignitas yeah. there. Our next up from Cloud9 versus Gravity, TL Moonbear writes, that flash timing by Keen was ridiculous. Here's your number two. Fight begins. Buddy Poo Poo low on health, knocked up by Nautilus. Kill goes to balls. Incarnation stays alive so far. Keen getting just evaporated. Pops the Zonia's Lemonation flashes out. Ball oh! side right left by Keen. Keen jumps in. Remember, he's built to be a frontline TF. So even though Meteos caught him and he got the combo there with wow. Incarnation, they still weren't able to take him out. <laughs> now that one, you know he was just mashing flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so flash button, and that has a lot to do with the timings of the people who shot the laser and shot the arcane barrage. So yeah. uh, perhaps to TSM for that. Right. <laughs> but in terms of time wasted there around the Zonias for Cloud9, and then on top of that, not securing the kill was a pretty big play yeah. in terms of uh, swinging the game for gravity. Finally, from TSM versus Team Impulse, Coley X3 says, Bjergsen with LeBlanc is perfection. It's your number one LCS big play. Dyra is here to help. Santorin is tanky enough, and Wild Turtle here to deal some damage. Bjergsen cuts off Rush, the kick over the wall. <laughs> Bjergsen just shows back up. Ignite in a Q, not going to give him the kill just yet, but Bjergsen still wants it. Uh, uh, all right, that's going to do it. <laughs> that's going to do it. Bjergsen gets the kill, the solo kill on the Rush. Yeah, what to do? I've landed my Q, but nowhere to go. All right. There are two total assists for TSM. It's really just Bjergsen and friends running around. <laughs> It's <laughs> just call that one. It's honestly uh, nothing for him to do. He's like, I hit it, but uh, uh, even if I connect, it's not an execute range, so no. run away. Should have cued Raptors, bro. You, you just, you it was down. Thought. It was down. Well, then you shouldn't have cleared the camp a minute and a half ago. Oh, yeah. Man. 
Hindsight. Come on, uh, bro. Go to the <laughs> well, uh, with all of those, let's take a peek at the standings to see how the teams are situated after yesterday's games. In first place with an undefeated 3-0 are Counter Logic Gaming and Team Liquid. Then just one game back in third are Gravity, Team Dignitas, and TSM. Holding one win and two losses are Cloud9, Enemy, and Team Impulse. And in ninth are Team 8 and TDK. Turning to today's schedule, we are starting it off with Cloud9 out to rebound against Team Impulse. Then we'll jump into Team Liquid versus Gravity. After that, buckle up for Counter Logic Gaming versus Team Solo Mid. And now, before we send it over to the casters, we want to ping you guys on Twitter about today's big showdown between CLG and TSM. We've heard the rivalry called many things. El Clasico, the backyard brawl, Goliath versus Goliath, and depending on which side of the feud you're on, Dumpster Palooza. But what <laughs> nickname do you give the rivalry showdown between CLG and TSM? Send your responses to at Lull Esports and throw on the hashtag LCS. We'll be reading a few of our favorites a little later. Now, without further ado, let's head over to the caster desk to get the games underway. Thanks, Dash. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Riven Tabiz in the third, and sharing the caster desk with me is the best dressed man in esports, Joshua Jatlees. See, that just doesn't make sense. You're far better dressed than I am today, Riven. It's the, the beard doesn't count as the whole ensemble. You just got it. You got it. Let's get down to business right now with our first match. It's Cloud9 versus Team Impulse. These are two groups that came into the split with a lot of hype and are now in a tie for sixth place with just one win. Yeah, it's true, Riv. Both Cloud9 and TIP, they did finish last split in the top four. Yeah. So this is definitely a disappointing start. And the fact that they're both one and two and playing each other right now means that by the end of the week, one of them will be one and three. So that's not good for either team. <laughs> uh, looking at Cloud9, it does show that the loss of Phi has had a profound effect on the team's identity. You know, Incarnation, he's played Kog'Ma twice, Victor once, and even just from the champion picks, that's nothing like having high in the mid lane. Also, when you look at the stats, he places fewer awards, he doesn't roam as frequently, and instead of being the first one into the fight, he's usually the last one into the fight. Yeah. So it kind of just goes to show that Cloud9 needs to ask themselves if they want Incarnation replacing high, or if they need to rebuild their team around Incarnation, because it's clearly a work in progress and something isn't quite in sync yet. Hopefully it happens early for them. And Team Impulse are fielding the same team that got them to the spring semifinals, but have not been able to recapture the same level of success. We've talked about how Impulse play with kind of a level of disorder, but yeah. instead of throwing off their opponents, it's been working against Impulse. Yeah, it really has. To be fair, though, Impulse has played CLG and TSM for two of their losses, but aside from that, they are a team that really count on getting an early game lead and then snowballing that advantage. But the problem comes time and again when they fall behind early because they haven't really shown the level of coordination to right. stage a big time comeback. And that's been the problem so far for them this year. Maybe. Usually it's been their team fights, Shao Wei Shao getting a pentakill or something. But <laughs> yeah. none of those highlights. So you just need Not to yet. light the fuse. Yeah. And Meteos shared with us Cloud9's strategy for handling Tip's chaotic play style. I think that we just have to play a really controlled style game against Tip because. They love just going for stuff all the time. And if you can set it up so that stuff they want to go for is harmful to them and you counter it correctly, I think that the game can go really well for us. I think that the game can go very well, but that's if we can counter them. Yeah, can it's always, always like, if you do this, then of course we're going to be able to do that. Meteos obviously still searching for some answers yeah. in how to run this team, but the strategy for Impulse does seem like the right one. A little bit of chaos. Let's check out the starting lineups as we get into the game. On the blue side, it is going to be Cloud9. That's Balls in the top lane, Meteos in the jungle, Incarnation in mid lane. Sneaky at 80 carry and Lemonation at support. Yeah, and then we have the red side with red sleeves on their sweatshirts. Team Impulse, Impact in the top lane, Rush in the jungle, Shaoi Shao in the mid lane. Apollo in 80 carry and Adrian on support. The blood of their opponents. Yeah, that's, saturating. That's the dream. That's the dream. Those guys. Hopefully it can come out in a few games. Cloud9 and Impulse here. Like we said, both tied for six at the moment with that one win. And not teams we would expect to be here at the beginning of the split. Usually ones that kind of put their foot down and step out with a surge but have been found out here, and teams have been able to work around them. Yeah, really strange opening to the season.